Hi there, I'm Mike. Whatever for you today is some Star Wars The Black Series slash Forest Friday slash New York City Comic Con news. It's been a while since I've just done an update video and I just want to sit in front of the camera and talk to you about toys. That's kind of what I'm here for and that's probably why you're here too. First I want to talk about what has come out, Force Friday, all of that stuff, and then I want to talk about what is going to come out. So Triple Force Friday was this past October 4th. It was called Triple Force Friday because it included things from three upcoming Star Wars properties. First we have The Mandalorian, which comes out in November, as well as Jedi The Fallen Order, which also comes out in November. And then lastly we have The Rise of Skywalker coming out this December. So it included all of the merchandise from those upcoming properties on one day, and it was very expensive. First, we have the main wave of Star Wars The Black Series figures. Those came out on Force Friday. They were street dated. Some people got them earlier, and yeah, I'm a little jelly of those people, but you know what? I didn't do too bad, so it ended up okay. Now, some of you with keen eyes, or you know, just eyes, may have noticed that some people are getting white boxes instead of black boxes. Those white boxes were special first edition boxes. They're only, to my knowledge, coming out for Force Friday and afterwards, everything is going to be a black box. So yes, they are limited edition. And of course, I tried to get everything in a white box because you know what? Why not? I wasn't completely successful, but I was mostly successful. Here we have number 90. This is Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's box. It's white. It has a really nice kind of shiny first edition logo on here. And you know what? Hasbro? Do this, get rid of this. This was fine, it was a good change at the time, back in 2015, but it's been five years. This is what you should do now. I like this, the, please do this and start the numbering system over because that's just ridiculous. I'm gonna do a, a full review on these, so I'm not gonna get too into it, but I really like it. Next we have number 91, Ray. Now she comes with Dio, a new little droid from the movie. I like her as well. In fact, I think she might be the best likeness that we've got of any figure ever. Next we have number 92, the Sith Trooper. Now it's the same Sith Trooper we got in San Diego Comic-Con, but with much fewer weapons. Next from the new Jedi Fallen Order game, we got Cal Kestis, the main character from it, with his little droid BD-1, which is my favorite part of the entire figure. I love this figure and I love BD-1. I don't know much about the character, but I do like how it looks. Next we have number 94, the Mandalorian from the aforementioned Mandalorian TV show. Haven't seen it, doesn't come out to November 12th, but I'm looking forward to it. I prepaid Disney Plus for three years because I'm so excited about it. Oh, I'm a whore. Next we have number 95, the second sister. Now I was very excited about this. Number one, because I really wanted an Inquisitor. I've been a big fan of Rebels since it came out and Inquisitors are a big part of that show. So I was very much looking forward to this figure. Number 97, we have the off-world Jawa. This is probably my least favorite figure of the ones released. It's basically just a Jawa, but with a soft goods cape. That's, that's it, that's the only difference. And lastly, we have number 97. This is the First Order Stormtrooper. This figure has improved <laughs> elbow articulation. That's the big deal about this figure. It's the same mold they use for the new Commander Pyre. It was cool they re-released it with a better sculpt. I just kind of wish that the Hasbro had added on uh, the extra gun just for display purposes. So those were the main figures that you could find just kind of out there, but that wasn't it. There were also exclusives popping up everywhere. First of all, we had these carbonized exclusives. There were four of them. So the boxes are highly reflective, almost foiled, and then the figures themselves have sort of a metallic paint job. They look fantastic and they commanded five dollars more and they were exclusive to certain places so number one we have number 92 from amazon the carbonized sith trooper i do want to say though that this one only came with one weapon instead of two so just so you know is that's just how that is next we have the target exclusive mandalorian i honestly love the way this looks the colors are vastly different from the standard release i don't know which i like better but i do like this but the, this numbering is the same this is number 94 but the box is just very very shiny as you can see under my lights and there's a premium paint job on both the weapons and the figure next we have gamestop exclusive number 95 the second sister this, I mean, it's the same as the other second sister, but she has, again, that metallic shine to it. I really like it. It's, a, it's actually more of a graphite look to it. And lastly, we have the one that's throwing everyone for a loop. This is the First Order Jet Trooper. This is a Walmart exclusive. It's number 99, which led a lot of people to say, where's number 98? Well, we're getting to that. I do like the way this box looks. 
Uh, it's white instead of darker like the other ones. And I love the way the trooper looks. And if you want to see me more hands-on with these figures, I purposely didn't do that here because in my last live stream, I actually opened these and gave my neutral thoughts like live. So if you want to see that, you want to see me open these figures, go check out my last live stream. It was a lot of fun to do. We had a great time. So those were the exclusive carbonized figures. And they're basically just re-release figures that were already in the wave or in Walmart's case, an upcoming wave. But those weren't the only exclusives. Another exclusive we had was this mystery box. This was Target exclusive. Now there's a lot of hate going on on this. I have it. I did an unboxing for it. So if you want to see what's in it, go watch that unboxing. But there is an exclusive figure in there that you could only get from this box for now. I've heard that that's going to change because you can get them just the figure itself from EB Games up in Canada. So there's a rumor that eventually you'll be able to get it by itself. So if you want to wait on it, go ahead. But if you want to see what the figure is and my thoughts on it, go watch the unboxing. Another exclusive found on Force Friday was this. I just got this in the mail. This is Clone Commander Fox. He showed up at GameStop in very, very limited quantities. More so the day after Force Friday, I guess Force Saturday. But I got my grubby hands on one and another one to send out to Papa Gord. So Papa Gord, you're getting one of these bad boys for you. This is just sort of a pre-announcement, I guess. I did get this from an unboxing that I have yet to publish. So if you want to see that, stay tuned. That This is going to be part of a bigger unboxing. But I wanted to show it off in the video because it looks good. Now, another figure that came out, not in America on Force Friday, but in Canada and Australia for some reason, was Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. This is going to be a Walmart exclusive. No one in America got it. As far as I know, it's supposed to come out sometime in the fall, maybe even December. But for now, you Canucks, you Aussies, you guys get... Uh, a little bit of a head start on everybody with this. I do have one on the way from Papa Gord, so I'm very much looking forward to getting that in the mail. So that's it for Force Friday news. Let's talk about through some upcoming figure news. First, we have Clone Commander Obi-Wan. He's not out in America yet, but he is out in the UK and Canada. I got mine from Papa Gord, but he is coming out at the end of October. So keep your peepers out. He's gonna be a Walgreens exclusive. I've heard October 27th. Don't hold me to that. That's just a date I've heard, but uh, just keep a lookout. Next at New York Comic Con, a lot of things were shown off. So let's get cracking on there. Pretty much everything I'm gonna talk about is pre-orderable right now. So go do that, I guess. But let's talk about first the upcoming Best Buy exclusive IG-11. Now, as far as I can tell, this is basically just an IG-88 with some extra stuff. He is gonna be, like I said, Best Buy exclusive. I have mine on order ready for in-store pickup on November 1st. He's from the upcoming Mandalorian show, the one that everyone thought was IG-88, but he's not. He's IG-11. But I guess congrats to Best Buy and getting your first exclusive. Also slated for November release, we have the next wave, wave 23 of Star Wars of Black Series figures. There are gonna be two repacks from the last wave in this, namely the Sith Trooper and Rey. There's also gonna be one figure double packed and we'll get to that. I've got these ordered in what I'm pretty sure are the numbers. First, we have number 98, which I'm pretty sure is Jenna from the upcoming Rise of Skywalker movie. This is the figure that everyone thought they were missing because they had 99 from the Jet Trooper and they didn't know who 98 was. It's because she's not out yet. She's coming out sometime in November. Next, we have the aforementioned First Order Jet Trooper, which is just the non-carbonized version. I think it looks pretty good, but the carbonized version looks good too. So I already know what's going on there. Next, we have Luke Skywalker from the Yavin Ceremony. This was actually on my wish list. So I'm very happy that Hasbro's watched that and decided to gift me this figure, that's not a thing. I like to joke that Hasbro watches my videos, but there's no way they do. There's just no way. But it is cool that a lot of my wishlist figures end up being released. So the Yavin figure, he comes with a gun, he comes with a medal, and that's pretty much it. Now, if you wish your Luke Skywalker figure came with more than that, there is gonna be a European convention exclusive version of this figure that's more based on the comic, and he comes with a lot more stuff, like a lightsaber, a little blaster effect for the lightsaber, and then Obi-Wan Kenobi's journal, which was featured in the comic. I'm hoping to get that. I'm hoping that it's gonna be a fan channel kind of release, like last year's Han Solo and Princess Leia was. So we'll see when that comes out. It was briefly available on Hasbro Pulse and it went down and sold out real fast. Next, after the Yavin Luke Skywalker, we have Wedge and Tilly's. I figure long missing in the line. I love Wedge and Tilly's. I've actually never owned a Wedge and Tilly's action figure before. He is the only like just regular guy that's made it through all three of the original trilogy movies while fighting in all the battles. And lastly, from The Mandalorian, we have Cara Dune. 
She looks fantastic. I can't wait to get her. She just is a commando. I don't know, she looks badass. I can't wait to see what she does in the TV show. I don't really have any connection to a lot of these characters, but I'm hoping that changes in the next month. So that's it for Wave 23. I have mine on pre-order from Dorkside, just in case you guys were curious. I'm, I'm hoping to get them. But if I find them in stores, it doesn't charge till it ships. So I'll just cancel my order and I've got them in store. It's kind of a win-win for me. Next, we have another Walmart exclusive, a third Walmart exclusive this year. Uh, well, not even this year. This quarter. We have the Force Ghost Yoda. This is a pairing to go with the Force Ghost Obi-Wan. I'm going to get it because I have Force Ghost Obi-Wan and I want to get, you know, the three of them on my shelf the, from Return of the Jedi. I, I really like this. It looks good. I don't really have a lot to say about it. I know a lot of people are disappointed, but like, if you don't like it, don't, don't buy it. It's fine but I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna look forward to it. Next, we have the GameStop exclusive Purge Stormtrooper. I definitely didn't forget to talk about this in the video and I'm definitely not adding it in later. It's coming out sometime soon, but we don't know exactly when. It's already out in Canada and I do have one on the way. Thanks to Papa Gord. Thanks again, Papa Gord. He looks sexy. I can't wait to get him. He's from the upcoming game, Jedi the Fallen Order. And he is going to be a welcome addition to my collection. And lastly, for the confirmed exclusives, we have the Amazon exclusive Chewbacca and C-3PO. Now, this is one that I wanted without putting on any list. First, we have Chewbacca, and he looks like he's got a different head mold at the very least. He comes with a uh, Imperial Stormtrooper blaster and a net. But the big thing here is C-3PO. This C-3PO is the newer molded C-3PO that we got from the Disney multi-pack figures with the articulated arms and the better legs. But what's cool about this is he has removable appendages and not just that, because they could have just had the appendage just pop off and left it at that, but they have attachable limbs to make it look like his arms and legs have been ripped off where they have wires hanging down. I cannot wait to get it. I have it pre-ordered from Amazon. It's gonna be 50 bucks. It's a little pricier than I'd like, but I think, I mean, we're getting basically two and a half figures out of this. Fine, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna eat it. It's, it's, it's fine. It looks good. It looks so good. It's slated to come out in December. In fact, mine on the, you know, the website tells you when it's slated for delivery. It's gonna be at my house on December 24th. So Merry Christmas to me. And lastly, a figure that hasn't really been talked about, but it was shown off at New York Comic Con. This is C-3PO with Babu Frick. This is something to do with the Rise of Skywalker movie. I don't really know a lot about it, except for <laughs> on the poster, they showed C-3PO with a bandolier and a gun, and everyone thought that poster was fake, because like, what the hell? But it's not, that's happening, and this is an action figure of it. And it's one of those things that's so ridiculous, I'm just gonna go with it. So look forward to that, I know. For some reason, I am. So that's it for Star Wars The Black Series news. If that's all you came here to watch, you can just peace out right now because the rest of the toys we're gonna talk about are things that I care about, but I don't wanna dedicate a whole video to. So let's move on with more reveals from New York City Comic Con. First with Transformers. Now, before I talk about New York City Comic Con reveals, I wanna just say Unicron got funded and my bank account took out <laughs> Big ass hit, oh man. The worst part about that is the money came out, but I'm not even gonna get the figure until the beginning of 2021 probably. But I'm very much excited for it. I'm glad that it got funded. So I don't know, congratulations Hasbro and congratulations to all of us who bought it and congratulations to the people that don't want it and saved your money. Congratulations to everybody. But let's talk about the reveals from New York City Comic Con. First of all, we have the next chapter of the War for Cybertron trilogy that is called Earthrise. And I am pretty excited about it. So Hasbro has announced and shown figures from the upcoming sort of sequel to that. And basically it just looks like instead of being on Cybertron, everyone's on Earth now and everyone has Earth alt mode. So they showed up Optimus Prime who has his traditional truck alt mode with trailer. It is gonna be a leader class figure, so it's probably gonna be about 50 bucks. It looks so good. But not just that, they're focusing on a lot of core G1 season one characters. So we're getting Grapple, we're getting Hoist, we're getting Wheeljack, we're getting Cliff Jumper, and they all look so good. I just cannot wait for that. They even showed off Starscream, who again, has his more traditional kind of F14 alt mode. I just love the way it looks. One of the things I'm not looking forward to this is having to rebuy all the figures. I mean, I just got the three core seekers. I'm not looking forward to having to buy them again just because now they have the proper alt modes instead of the Tetra Jets. But you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. On top of the star screen, they also teased the head mode of Black Zirac, sort of uh, alluding to the upcoming Titan class Scorponok that they're working on. It was a grayscale model, so it didn't really show a lot, but it does look pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna buy it, but we'll find out. And lastly, they 
are showing off a new sort of gimmick for Earthrise, and that's the MicroMaster playset. So back when I was a kid, the MicroMaster playset, I had one, it was Ironworks. I got it for my birthday when I was in second grade, and it just went with little MicroMasters, and it was a playset that turned into like a little factory yard, and then, then it turned into a battle station. This, they took that same concept, and it's Ironworks, so it's the same one as a kid. But now they're also adding a robot mode, which is just freaking blowing my mind. So that's pretty much it for Transformers. A lot to look forward to. Siege was fantastic. I'm sad to see it end, but I'm really happy that we're getting something like Earthrise. I think that's going to be really good as well. Next, we have the upcoming announced Marvel Legends. Now, I have not been collecting as many Marvel Legends this year as I have in the last couple years. I'm still saying that I'm not a Marvel Legends collector, despite a shelf of them that right off camera that you cannot see. I have been limiting myself to just X-Men characters. I don't really want to dwell too much on this because there are other people that have done it more. And again, I'm not a huge Marvel Legends collector, but I am looking forward to some of the upcoming releases here. So we'll see how those work out. Next, we have NECA. NECA, just so everyone knows, bought Loot Crate, which is fantastic. I'm really hoping that NECA brings Loot Crate's kind of quality back up to where it was, but more importantly doing NECA inspired boxes. One of them is going to be a Ninja Turtles box. It's going to be 50 bucks. I'm definitely going to buy it. In other Ninja Turtles news, uh, they showed off their Triceraton and I'm very much looking forward to that in their cartoon line, but there's not a lot of new stuff there. Most of it's just rehash of stuff they already showed and I talked about back in my San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, video. Lastly, I do want to talk about the Super 7 figures because they're doing Ninja Turtle stuff as well. Whereas NECA is taking the cartoon characters and making cartoon accurate turtles, Super 7 is taking the original toys and just turning them up to 11. Their initial release is on pre-order right now until the end of this month. It's going to be Raphael, Splinter, Baxter Stockman, and a Foot Soldier. I'm pretty sure I'm only going to be in on the four core turtles on this line. It's just too expensive. I think they're like 50 bucks a pop. And I just, I can't drop that much money. They look good, don't get me wrong. And as much as I love a Baxter Stockman or Splinter, I just don't have that much shelf space and I am a core turtle collector. And that's it for all I wanna talk about, honestly. There was a lot more news and I could go on and on about all of these things, but I feel like I've gone on long enough. What did you think? What was your favorite thing down in the downstairs area? Let me know. I love to read and respond to all of those. While you're down there, there are a couple of different ways that you can Contribute to my channel if you want to. Help me out a little bit, up to and including checking out my Patreon page. If you want to, you can do that. Speaking of which, I would like to thank these people all around here uh, for supporting my Patreon page. Thank you, Patreon supporters. You guys are fantastic. It would help me out, though, if you give this video a like and a share. If you hit that subscribe button, smash the bell. You know the normal stuff that people say at the end of every YouTube video. And that's it. It means a lot to me that you got this far through the video. And I'll see you later. Bye.